Hey, everybody. We'd like to welcome you back to hashtag talk to WFTDA community call in. We are your hosts. Chai Kils- I'm Chai Kilski, a.k.a. Chai. My pronouns are she, her. I am a skater and announcer living in Denver, Colorado. And my name is Cupcake, a.k.a. Cakes, formerly Cola from Cupcake. My pronouns are she, her, and I am a coach and announcer in the Chicagoland area. If you missed last week, uh, the premise of this show is to host a community-driven discussion on preset topics each week. The purpose is to provide an avenue for people to be heard by the WFTDA and wider Roller Derby community, regardless of league membership, affiliation, or social media following. We are volunteers with the WFTDA shows and content team, making media for the Derby community with WFTDA resources. Our role as hosts is to welcome guests, explain how this show works, and also introduce the topics and give opening remarks. We won't be taking questions unless they're about how the show operates, but we'll be taking all of your commentary as it comes in. To call into the show, please make sure you join our Discord server. One of our producers will take your information and place you in the queue. It is best to have the precise statement ready so that we can hear as many people as possible in our allotted time. We suggest about a minute per caller. If you do not have Discord, you can use the hashtag talk the number two WFTDA with our producers monitoring on the Twitter and Instagram feeds. Just a couple of acknowledgements. Uh, Cakes and I are both cis white people who live with privileges that many of our community do not have. We acknowledge that this showtime is not currently convenient for many in the community outside the continental United States. This show will be recorded and posted to YouTube after the event. And most importantly, we recognize the lack of black, indigenous, and people of color representation on our volunteer team. If you would like to host this show, another show, or pitch your own, please contact the WFTDA shows and content team at broadcast at quadmedia.tv. All right, our topic this week, we want to hear from the community about problematic and or colonizing language, team names, derby names um, within the community. We would, we will post links to the Twitch chat that are relevant to this topic in Derby and in the world. For some context, last year, Maine became the first U.S. state to ban Native American mascots, nicknames, and logos in schools and colleges. This is part of a larger trend to decolonize sports from the amateur to the professional. Roma Derby leagues and businesses are following suit from .75, formerly known as sociopath, to home teams in Minnesota and Maine. The Derby community is starting to do the work of undoing years of names and language that are no longer beneficial or were actively harmful to the people in the communities they serve. We want to hear from you about your experiences with problematic language, what you and your leagues are doing to become more inclusive, and what you hope to see in the Derby community moving forward. If you'd like to make your voice heard on this platform, please join in the Twitch chat room as well as on Discord. Please consider your audience when calling into the show and interacting on Twitch and Discord. Abusive language, which includes all racist, sexist, ableist, and other discriminatory discriminatory language will not be tolerated. And so with that all being said, we're opening up the lines for people to go ahead and give us a call. Uh, We did just mention that Sociopath uh, did rebrand and is now 0.75. It was a wonderful introduction into uh, kind of what we're talking about, problematic language and readdressing the situation. So currently on your screen, you'll see the rebrand information from 0.75. And that's just one of the ways our community is starting to change to make the language suitable for our community. And kudos to point seven five for doing the work and also putting out a statement. Sometimes the best way for us to move forward is to learn a little bit more behind the brand and why they change.
As you can see in the statement there by 0.75, after discussions and tears and self-reflection, changing the business name uh, is the best idea moving forward. You can find 0.75 on Twitter as well as Instagram. If you were following Derby Twitter and the hashtag talk to WFTDA at any point over the weekend, there was plenty of talk about problematic, problematic language in roller derby. It has been something that people has have talked about over the last few months. That's right. This and weekend, didn't overhead. you host uh, an episode of Upon Jewish Team Jewish Roller Derby? Yes. And so uh, that's what I was hoping to bring up as well. We did have a wonderful show on Upon Review with Jewish Roller Derby as well as uh, Team Indigenous. And it was the We Are Nation game. And typically, Upon Review is talking about the game and plays that happen uh, within the, in this atmosphere and in this bubble of roller derby. Uh, but this historic We Are Nation game, a game without borders, we really discussed and talked about not only the game and, and the witnessing of just a huge change in our community, but we discussed a lot of the problematic language. Luckily, we had representatives from Team Indigenous who were Jumpy McGee and Ash uh, but also we had from, excuse me, Ashtray, I should say. And then also from the uh, Jewish Roller Derby, we had a uh, strong female character, also known as Coffee, Knox, and Hammy. And uh, overall, we, they had such eloquent ways of saying how problematic, problematic language uh, has kind of evolved. And when you think about language in general, language is meant to evolve. And so as a community, talking about those issues is the best way for the community to evolve as a whole. So if you haven't in seen case. that, so please tune in. Thank Definitely. you. We saw um, a tweet from Jumpy um, about the football team from Washington State, um, who, if you haven't seen the news today, you may want to check it out. They have finally decided that they're going to change their name. But uh, Jumpy here on Twitter says, friends, we know Washington didn't change their name for social responsiveness, but your indigenous friends today want to celebrate that it is changing. So can we stop with the yeah, but today? Hashtag change the name, hashtag not your mascot. Great point. If you are just now tuning in, this is hashtag Talk to WFTDA Community Call-In Channel, and we want to hear your voice. Please join us via Discord and tell us what you think about today's topic. I do have um, toe stops in the uh, chat room, hoping to uh, get on there live, but luckily uh, they gave me plenty of information about some problematic language that they have uh, had in their league, one of them being mohawks and tomahawks to describe a sliding stop and simply calling it now toe stop or, you know, sliding. Uh, however, you're, it depends regionally what you decide to call it. Uh, but overall, mohawks are an indigenous peoples and then calling a move um, is not something that should be continued. So they were wonderful in letting us know that that still is problematic in their league. I'll go ahead and open it up in case there are more options. Toad Stops will be here to talk to us about a little bit more about that in a moment. And if you are watching on the Twitch chats or just watching the stream, they are starting to post links there. Um, there is the YouTube link to Saturdays Upon Review uh, featuring uh, the We Are Nation game from Champs in Montreal.
And then with that said, we will take a small break just to let our tech catch up with us, <laughs> let all my screens refresh, and we'll be back with you shortly. Welcome back. This is the hashtag talk to WFTDA, the community call in show where WFTDA listens to you. Right now, what do we have available to discuss on our threads Ooh, here, Chai? We have a Cakes, we have a caller. Uh, we have Party on Barth from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Pronouns he, him. I put him on air. Here we go. Hi, Barth. You're on the air. Hey, Chai Cakes, two of my favorites. Good to see you. Hey, hey nice too. to hear from you. Hey, so this was definitely one uh, close to my heart to reach out on. Um, as an announcer, and especially as a cis white male announcer, um, I certainly believe Derby. I'm I'm absolutely a guest in this space. And I've done a lot of learning, and I know it's a process that I'm only barely beginning, but trying to get rid of ableist language in particular, but just cliches, crutches, and things like that, that over 30-some years of speaking English, you just use these cliches and get stuck on things that are offensive and they're hurtful, and they were started out to demean other people, and they've just become cute little fun sayings and so getting rid of those has been probably one of the harder processes I've had but I've been very lucky and thankful that I've had people in my life who are willing to call me out on it and tell me hey that one's going to stop now and I definitely wanted to go ahead and uh, reach out and acknowledge and congratulate everybody in the indigenous community in particular today um, I was a huge Washington football fan for many 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 years uh, 91 I think I fell in love with them Gave up on the team a couple of years ago, and today didn't expect it, uh, but I actually got a little emotional seeing that the name is finally going to change because I know what I thought that name meant to me uh, for a long time. And a couple of years ago, I learned what that name meant to other people that I cared about. And it's, it wasn't in any way, shape, or form the same connection, and it wasn't a positive one for them. And so to see something that painful that hurtful and just disgusting to see that removed from the public vernacular for the time and to see that kind of victory for those that don't get a platform nearly as often as i do um i feel that calls for congratulations and i'm really really glad to see that change made and i look forward to more of it Awesome, yeah. Thank you so much for calling in today. We really appreciate it. Thanks. I think uh, Parian Barth brought up a really good point that as announcers, and I think, uh, you know, being on this platform, many recognize us as announcers, um, which by any means, you do not have to be an announcer to call into the show. Please feel free to voice your opinions and, and your uh, comments to us, regardless of the position you play or the volunteerism that you play in Roller Derby, we'd be happy to take your call. Um, Speak, speaking of announcers, um, we yeah. have another one who has utilized the hashtag on Twitter there, that is Sydney Carton. Um, also yes, go Spider. right ahead. Yes, yeah, he says, there was an incident a couple of years ago back in the NBA where an announcer from Oklahoma City used the phrase, out of his cut and pick in mind to describe a moment. The announcer was fired and the player himself said the phrase had no place. However, I know it is a regional phrase. My mom said it before, you know, when I was screwing up. I'm black, I get how the intention falls flat. As announcers, can you think of any other regional slang or jargon like that which has run its course? So if you have anything to say to that, of course, please do call in. Uh, we've been able to post the tweet here so you can see it if you're not on Twitter. But again, Chai, this just brings up, you know, one of the points at uh, experiences at Big O. We did have vernacular that was using the term powwow to describe a meeting uh, for uh, a group of people. And it was immediately reported and uh, acknowledged and 
educated to those that didn't understand it. And it was a, a regional use of language um, as to why it was reported. But simply things like this uh, in our in our world of announcers, um, things like mm -hmm. this need to be addressed and changed immediately. And that's one of the things that uh, that people were discussing in the in the threads as well. So I know on, on this show, we usually don't try to, you know, do exposition on our own, but you and I, as announcers, we, we are more visible than maybe some when it comes to language like this. You know, when we're talking, we're talking into a microphone, we're amplified um, in more ways than one. And so I think I'm fine to relax it a little bit while we're waiting on callers. <laughs> Um, because there have been some things, especially in the last postseason, um, that were said and were problematic. And, you know, I hate to repeat the words because they're offensive, but um, there was a lot of learning done last season, I think, especially on the announcer end of things, you know, not just in skating, but uh, definitely. Yeah. All right. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, the WFTDA Diversity and Inclusion League Climate Survey is now out. Uh, that is a new survey for anyone to take, past, present skaters, officials, and volunteers. Um, that is one to check out. And we are going to take a short break, and then we'll be back. Hey, welcome back, everybody. We're still welcome waiting on back. Dollars. Don't be shy now. <laughs> We actually have Tracy from KC, uh, the Kansas City Roller Warriors, uh, ready to join us. And um, Tracy, I think we had called had called in uh, previously, and we're so excited to welcome her back. Tracy from KC, can you hear us? Okay, I sure can. Can you hear me? <laughs> Yay! Yes, we can. Yes. It's so oh, nice good. To hear and from I think I again. figured out the the echoing issue that I had previously. So hopefully that won't happen again. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, thanks for calling. Oh, thanks for having the show. Um, some of the problematic language that I've heard um, both in and out of Derby, it, it seems like a lot of the problematic language that I hear is somehow connected to uh, disrespect or disparaging the indigenous community. Um, as you mentioned before, you know, things like moves being called Mohawk or Tomahawk, um, meetings being called powwows. Um, something else that I've heard that's been fairly common um, in and out of Derby has been terms like going off the reservation when you're talking about someone who isn't doing what you would want for them to do. And to be honest, for a long time, I didn't, I didn't make the connection with that particular phrase going off the reservation. So I, I took a look and that's when I learned, I mean, I knew about reservations, but I didn't know how problematic reservations have been in this nation's history. So once I made that connection, it was real easy for me to say, okay, that's a phrase that's never going to come out of my mouth again. So I think, I think people tend to be kind of hesitant because they may feel like we're being watched all the time. We have to watch everything we say, we have to watch everything we do. But it's, it's not so much that folks are trying to control what's being said, it's that we want to be respected. People want to be respected. All of us want to be respected. The Black skaters, the indigenous skaters, the Latinx skaters, Asian skaters, we all want to be respected as we're playing this sport and as we're contributing to our leagues. So when we hear language that is dismissive or disrespectful like that, it makes it really hard for us to connect with either that individual or with more individuals in the league or sometimes even with the entire league because if if they're willing to just throw a phrase out there without much thought behind it, then they're not going to have that much thought behind me as a skater or me as an official or me as a human being. So we are asking for folks to put more thought into what you're about to say and find ways to just 
change it um, to just say what it is that you actually mean instead of these phrases that have become so ingrained in our language that we just throw them out without much thought. And um, I, I know I said earlier that I wouldn't take up a whole lot of time, but I'll throw out an example from um, my regular job as a librarian. And this was a few years ago. Um, we had switched from using a copy machine where you had to feed it with, with coins to a scanning system that you had to um, scan the item and then go to a different computer to, to print up the item from a, a printer. And someone was having a really hard time getting what they wanted scanned, scanned. And I went over to this individual and tried to help them with the scam. And they almost did it correctly, but then they, they did something a little sooner than they needed to. And then the scan messed up. And out of frustration, they said, oh, this is just so gay. And before I could even stop myself, I leaned in towards him and said, I'm sorry, what was that? And then he said, uh, um, it, it's, uh, it, it, it's frustrating, which I'm sure is what he meant to say but he didn't need to say it the way he did. Um, so that, that was just a, a quick way. And again, before I could even stop myself to figure out, okay, how do I want to address this? I just leapt in and addressed it in a way that I, I could tell embarrassed him and I didn't mean to embarrass him, but say what you mean. And you meant that you were frustrated at this piece of technology. It, it's, it's not really hard to take a moment before you say something and try to find something that's got fewer issues than what you're, what was originally about to slip out of your mouth. And that's it. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing, Tracy. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for me. All right, we don't have a cue. So again, if you'd like to join in, please do so. Um, we do have a couple of comments from Twitch. 0.75 actually did join in and she says, it is scary to be called out, but that is because you know they're probably right. Once you get over the initial shock, you just need to do the work, learn, and move forward to do better and not repeat those same things. Um, speaking from very, very recent experience. Um, another one from Homesick Leave. I still feel like the reason people are afraid to speak out is because of a fear that it will lead to them being thrown out of their league. And for so long, nothing has happened to the many leagues engaged in this. Um, and that makes me think of the open letter that Atlanta Roller Derby recently put out to the WFTDA, um, which outlines ways for leagues to work on themselves um, and ways for the WFTDA to work with leagues I'm becoming actively anti-racist and dismantling white supremacy within the institution and uh, the community. Well said. I will have them post the link to the Twitch chat there if you haven't read that. It is a wonderful letter. All right. Looks like we may have a new caller soon. Let's see if they're ready to go on. All right. So let's go ahead and welcome Toast Stops. Uh, Toast Hops. So cute. I love that. Um, <laughs> That's a great name. Great name. Welcome to the show. Oh, we're waiting on them to come to the show. Here we go. Welcome, Toast Tops. You are on the air. Thank you. Thank you. I okay, definitely so want to give you like a warm you welcome because I saw your. <laughs> I'm so so. Yeah, there's going to be a delay between us and the the feed, but I want to give you a really warm welcome. Thank you for not only joining us on the show, but for messaging and having the courage to share. So, welcome. And what would you like to share with us today? 
Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, like you mentioned before, uh, I've also witnessed some problematic language uh, change in my own league, and it's really heartwarming to see those kinds of things take place because um, it's not it's not always easy for people to change vernacular that they've been used to their whole lives. So it's really heartwarming to see th uh, things in my league uh, change like stop calling uh, certain moves mohawks and tomahawk tomahawks um and um uh strangely enough um another one of the bigger ones was uh stopping it uh, was to stop using the um r word because we actually have a special needs mom uh who is uh one of our skaters Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, right now like, we have. Oh, sorry. I was just going to mention that we have your um, graphic up here of why your name is now Toe Stops in your details on Facebook. Yes. So I actually um, like like uh, just like point seven five. Um, I myself. Uh, re I myself changed my roller derby name to kind of be a little less problematic. Um, as an MLP fan and as someone who's LGBT myself, I never really thought, you know, it through um, when I made the roller derby name Rainbow Bash because I it. I guess to someone on the outside who maybe doesn't know what MLP is, they might misconstrue it for um, LGBT bashing, and that's not something that I wanted to portray. So um, that's kind of why I changed my uh, my alias, my my roller derby name. Fair point. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Toast Tops. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, with that, we're going to take a quick break. And we'll be right back. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Um, while we were on break, we were gently reminded by, it looks like, Dana Skull from the Twitch stream. A lot of the disability community don't prefer to be called special needs. Uh, they prefer disabled or um, person-first language. So you would say person with a you know, disability there. Um, so thank you, Dana, for that contribution. And got another uh, comment Maki. from Twitch Cakes. Do you want that one? Yeah, Maki from Twitch. Um, it's late to the party, but wasn't sure if this had been said yet, but they would really like to see WFTD make some guidelines as far as derby names because we've seen them in the past or present names that are just plain wrong with red, uh, racism, genocide, you name it. I think it should be part of the COC if it's not already. And I I can almost promise you that uh, I believe with our the COC that was put out last year, uh, I believe does address anything that is in regards to racism or genocide um, and, and ableist language uh, in a name should, you know, be um, discussed within the, you know, code of conduct and should be uh, exercised as such. So hopefully um, your league is doing that. All right, with that, our next caller is Bia Nimble. I'm going to have her on air from Maine Roller Derby. Hey, Bia, you're on the air. Hi, thanks for having me again. <laughs> Always. <laughs> I was lucky enough to talk a little bit last week, but actually this um, particular topic um, holds uh, a little closer to my heartstrings. Um, so um, I skate and coach for Maine Roller Derby. I'm lucky enough to have Jumpy McGee, co-founder of Team Indigenous, as one of my teammates. Um, and so um, because of her 
epic advocacy and uh, helping un uh, the community to understand sort of the repercussions around these sort of problematic or um, colonizing names, we actually um, went on a trajectory this past year to rename uh, one of our home teams. Um, Previously, um, one of our home teams had been the Calamity Janes. Now, if you think about home teams or even like roller derby in general, you're like, okay, Calamity Janes, what does that have to do with Maine? Which is just what I thought. Um, and then there was like some discussion of maybe at one point it was like Calamity Janes, like, you know, clam, like the uh, uh, shellfish. Um, and then somehow it just sort of got, got derived to Calamity Janes. However, all of that is to say that um, realized probably within the last uh, year to 18 months after doing some research that um, there was this piece of uh, the Calamity Jane legacy that was about westward expansion. And of course, if you understand what westward expansion was, it was about having like white folks sort of take over uh, land as they moved west um, and, and take it away f from the individuals that lived there. And so pretty quickly, we all agreed that this was like not something that we wanted to represent. Go ahead and, and just quickly um, pull up uh, one of our um, statements that we made um, when we were discussing this. Um, uh, this, considera this consideration led us to look at the home team, the Calamity Janes, through this name has, though this name has history with our league, historical narrative for the person of Calamity Jane or Martha Jane Canary is more complicated and challenging. Martha Jane was a frontierswoman born and raised during the westward expansion. Though the truth to her history is clouded with tall tales and conflicting accounts, she did claim to ride with General Custer in the U.S. military in the hunt of indigenous people of the plains. And so that's just a piece of what we put out to our larger audience in, um, in explaining why we were relooking at this. Um, I think, you know, one of the big questions or like things that people want to bring up at this time is like, well, what about all of the money you spent on branding you know, these teams so far? And for us, um, that, that was a moot point that, that, that didn't really matter. Um, we are a really small league. We don't have a lot of funds, but we really care about being on or attempting to um, be better within the quote unquote right side of history. Um, and so despite all of those sort of, um, things that I think people generally think are barriers, we unequivocally as a league decided that we were going to retire that name. And then we put out a, um, contest basically, um, to our community, um, for a new or different name. Um, and so, no, I, I'm not saying that this is what is able to be done by every league, but um, I think um, I'm really, really proud of, of my league, Maine Roller Derby, for being on the forefront of, of this um, and, you know, and not using those barriers as an excuse. Um, so... Now, I, I would just implore everyone to sort of really look at, at their names and their logos and all of those things and make sure they're giving public message that we want to send as a community. Um, and if they aren't, start talking about it. Um, you don't need to change it automatically, um, but just start talking about it. But that's my experience in my league. and. Um, I'm so grateful to have been able to share it. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the interview. We super appreciate it. Um, and that, you know, brings me to another another tidbit here that we've we've, we've pulled up for everyone today. Um, Punchio Guts is a coach and is with, I believe, Rat City Roller Derby in Seattle. They write in their blog 
um, they, they have a blog called Inclusive Coaching, and it is a resource for coaches in roller derby uh, regarding language, where to go to start learning different things. Um, and they write, there are many commonly used words and phrases in derby that are racially insensitive, culturally appropriative, gendered, ableist, and sensitive to folks who struggle with mental illnesses. Um, that That is definitely worth uh, a look when you get a chance. And we will post the link to that one in the Twitch chat as well. Um, looks like we have one more caller. We do have Ref in Peace, who you normally see as a host uh, on this show. But today he is calling in. Hold on. All right, Ref. Rip, you are on the air. Oh. <laughs> oh, he was. He was. Hi. Okay, Rip. <clears throat> Hi. Hey, there you are. Now. <laughs> hey, it's great to uh, see you all and uh, and hear all the conversation. Long time viewer, first time caller. Um, it's really great uh, to uh, to have this topic be under discussion. And uh, I really do want to give a shout out to all the other voices who called in and kind of express their either uh, behaviors or what their league is doing and kind of the changes that are that are going on. Something I wanted to kind of uh, just speak briefly about is the handling of problematic language in an interpersonal relationship. And I think Tracy touched on that. Um, and. I think one of the, the kind of the biggest challenges we have is how do we address a problem in a safe setting so that way the person we're, we're trying to kind of let know that the, the words that they just used are not the best choice uh, in this day and age and, and hopefully uh, to kind of point them in the right direction. Um, and I, I, I recognize that that's not always very easy. And that sometimes people who don't feel empowered may not confront somebody directly, um, you know, in order to address uh, a, a particular language problem. And I think that, like, many, many companies and many uh, leagues um, have a, uh, you know, a reporting protocol. Like, how do you send this information back to the people who, who said it? in a way that they can learn and change and, and kind of do better in the future. And that's really what it's all about because like, I, I don't know anybody who's perfect and I know we've all made mistakes in our lives. And like the first step to getting good at something is you start out by being bad and you learn. So if we can learn to say, okay, this is the right thing to say because this is the wrong one. Um, and here's why then I think we can make a step in the right direction. Um, recently, I came across a, a tweet from Twitter uh, that was on July. Twitter engineering team on how they were going to adopt different changes in their own language uh, going forward. So that way they can be a little more inclusive and less problematic. Um, and it was a really good like stepping stone to see even Twitter, the platform that you know, a lot of us use in a variety of different ways where language policing is not often kind of considered, but internally they're saying we're going to make a choice, a conscious choice to do better than what we have been doing before. And, uh, you know, is this the entirety of, of what is needing to be addressed? No, not at all. But the fact that they're acknowledging it and making a, a, a choice to publicly state we're going to do this in the public and we're going to try and make it better i think brings a whole lot of um a lot of credence to the efforts that they are making uh internally so uh, i think we can all kind of take a take a page out of the idea of we need to figure out alternate ways to use words and and kind of do a little better thanks for uh letting me call in Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for calling Rick. in. I really appreciate it. All right. We don't have anybody left in the queue, so I think we're going we're gonna to end this show a few minutes early this week. 
We appreciate everyone who joined the stream. Thank you for calling into the show today. Uh, we do want to reiterate this is a community show that relies on you, the viewer, to share your thoughts. And we will look forward to listening to you all next week.